Today, I am launching a new series on the channel called Evidence-Based Moment. Hello and welcome to The Comprehensive Dentist. My name is Dr. B and you are watching a segment of the channel I like to call Evidence-Based Moment. Today is the official launch of this series and it is designed for the dental professionals who want to learn more about evidence-based dentistry. Today, my goal is to give you a primer of why I decided to launch this series and an idea of what to expect with this series moving forward. In the practice of dentistry, it is ideal to balance the appropriate application of best available evidence, so evidence-based dentistry, with the knowledge accumulated through clinical experience. How you balance evidence-based dentistry with clinical experience is entirely up to you. In the end, the goal should be to deliver care to our patients that optimize outcomes for the patient. Many of us have said phrases such as, well, it works in my hands or in my experience. This type of evidence is something that we all rely on within our practice. You do something clinically, an experiment if you will, and you analyze how it turned out. Each and every one of us conduct little experiments all day, every day for various things in our life. Maybe you take a different way to work today and you compare that to the route you normally go. Perhaps you try a new Italian restaurant and you base your experience uh, on whether or not you come back or if you're gonna recommend this restaurant to your friends. The clinical practice of dentistry is no different. You try new materials and based on your experience with using the material, you decide if you would like to try it again. Or you try a new technique for a procedure you do in your practice all the time. Early on in our dental practice, we experiment more and the longer we practice, we tend to experiment less. Experimenting less over time is the idea of being set in your ways, I guess you could say, or knowing how you like to do things. And the reality is there is nothing wrong with evidence. It has its place and value can be developed from our experiences. However, this is not the only option we have to make clinical decisions. Every dental provider has autonomy to make their own clinical decisions. I like to call this our practice philosophy. Another way of looking at this is why we do what we do. Some of us know why we do what we do better than others. If you ever say things like, well, this is how I did it in dental school, or this is how I was taught, then you likely don't fully understand why you do what you do. You're just relying on those past experiences or instructors in that situation. In addition to the freedom to make our own decision about our practice philosophy, we are also bound by ethical obligations, such as to do no harm. So how do we ensure that we do no harm? Well, that's a bit of a loaded question, and answers such as acting on the patient's best interest, you know, not intentionally trying to harm the patient, uh, trying to treat the patient as if it was your mom in the chair, those could all be appropriate answers. Another way to do no harm is to stay up to date on relevant scientific literature. You just don't know what you don't know. And although ignorance is sometimes bliss, in the world of medicine and dentistry, ignorance can lead to poor patient outcomes. After 10 years of clinical practice, I have to say that one of the hardest things about being a dentist is trying to keep up with the relevant scientific literature. In the world that we live, we are daily bombarded with information. It comes at us from all angles. Humans are generating new knowledge at ridiculous rates. In her book, Rookie Smarts by Liz Wiseman, she talks about how the total amount of information in the world actually doubles approximately every 18 months. In the field of medicine, knowledge doubles every two to three years. And since you are watching this video on YouTube, more videos are uploaded to YouTube in two months than the three major TV networks in the US have created in the last 60 years. If it's hard to keep up with information on general topics, then you know that dentistry is no different. As a dentist, I have some options for acquiring new knowledge. And today, in 2020, I have far more options than I had 10 years ago. 
Textbooks have been used for decades and are still a great way to learn new information. I personally love textbooks because it gives me a lot of information about a topic all in one place. One downside though is that by the time a textbook is written, there's a good chance that the information within the textbook could be outdated. This happens less likely in dentistry, but a good example would be a textbook on say something like computer programs. Computer and technology advance so quickly that information is quickly outdated. Luckily for us, dentistry doesn't change super fast, so textbooks are still a great way to acquire new information. Dental journals are, in my mind, the best way to acquire new knowledge. And not just any journal. There are journals and there are magazines. Magazines have articles written by dental professionals, and really this is just uh, something like expert opinion. However, these can be very useful if the author of an article is good about citing their resources and explaining why they do what they do. A peer-reviewed journal is vetted, meaning that other professionals review article submissions and approve all articles published in the journal. This process allows many subject matter experts to screen the article prior to pushing it to the masses. This is a good way to build in quality control, if you will. Getting information from a peer-reviewed journal is great, but keep in mind that the articles or studies within also vary in the evidence or the level of evidence presented. Simply put, some study designs are better than others. Some studies show statistical significance that correlates well to the clinical significance, and others come up short. More on levels of evidence shortly. An issue with journals becomes access. Most dentists lack access to multiple journals. Many providers only read journals published by organizations they are members of, such as being a member of the American Dental Association and how that gives you access to the Journal of the American Dental Association, or JADA. While these journals are good and can be helpful, having access to one or two journals only gives you a piece of that overall knowledge pie. You run the risk of missing out on good information published by other quality journals. Now, in my personal opinion, I think it is almost criminal that obtaining quality information from journals requires me to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars every year. The quality of care that we deliver depends on many things, but it is also influenced heavily by the information I have access to, and if I take advantage of that material I have access to. I've seen many providers have access to good information, but simply not use it. Another popular way to get dental information today is through social media channels. Apps like Facebook and Instagram have created opportunities to see other people's work and to learn from other dental providers. Facebook offers a number of dental groups that you can join, and within these groups, you can post questions, opinions, photos, and engage in dialogue with other providers. Some groups contain over 30,000 providers and allow you to see into the brains of these experts around the world. These groups are very helpful and offer you a great way to get opinions from other providers. However, downsides include that the volume of information and filtering through these opinions can be time consuming. Also, if it is one thing I have learned is that you will never have two dentists agree 100%. So when you have conflicting information, it can further muddy the learning. I find that there are a lot of opinions on these forums, and if you lack knowledge on a specific topic, it can be hard to decipher good information from crap information. No matter where you get your information, it is a good idea to know about the evidence pyramid. The evidence pyramid represents a hierarchy of evidence with the lower quality evidence represented at the bottom of the pyramid and the higher quality evidence seen at the top of the pyramid. This pyramid illustrates that there is a difference between expert opinion and well-designed studies that control the study variables and limit biases within the study. So one thing you wanna ask yourself about the information that you are taking in is where does it fall on the evidence pyramid. Is this expert opinion I'm reading as seen on many Facebook forums or is this an actual randomized controlled study published in April's journal from like the Journal of Endodontics? Now that's not to say that there's not value in the expert opinion, but it is just that, it's an opinion. That opinion can be more valuable if it is based and founded on higher levels of evidence. 
As a dental provider who desires to practice evidence-based dentistry, I find that I acquire information from many sources. As a mentor and instructor at a dental residency, I've had the privilege and opportunity to access a large number of journals at no cost to myself. So access to information is not a problem, but often finding time to read through this information and actually digest that information is the biggest issue. If you have a busy dental practice, finding time to read dental info and properly balance other areas of your life becomes a nearly impossible task. Despite this difficulty, I owe it to myself and my patients to try my best to stay up to date and to base my clinical decisions more on the best available evidence and less on opinion from experience alone. One of the things I love about dentistry is how my practice is entirely up to me. I remember how liberating it was to graduate dental school and to be 100% free to make my own decisions. Part of you is super excited and the other part of you is like, oh crap, like now I have to figure this out on my own. And it is in that moment that you realize what you know and what you don't know. You realize what you're good at and what needs more work. You realize your strengths and your weaknesses. As a general dentist, I try to be as comprehensive in my dental practice as possible, but I can honestly say that after 10 years of practicing, I still don't know everything. In fact, I would argue that it is harder to be comprehensive than it is to just focus on a handful of things. In some ways, being comprehensive and performing at a proficient level in everything is a myth. There are days when patients sit in my chair and I have to figure out how I'm going to care for that patient. That is what makes practicing dentistry what it is. You are always practicing and trying to get better. When faced with a new challenge, I like to do my own background literature review on the topic and get as much information as possible. With a ton of information at my disposal, I then decide how I'm going to use this information to best treat my patient. This is me trying to make an educated decision. Knowledge is power and knowledge gives you the confidence to tackle new challenges in dentistry. I always prefer to invest in my own knowledge and understanding. So, in our segment evidence-based moment, I will share with you information I have read from dental journals. My goal is to pick articles that could benefit the practicing dentist, you know, the doc that is actually in the trenches and worries more about the clinical practice than just trivial information. In my mind, if information cannot be used clinically or it does not impact my clinical practice, then what good is it? So I will do my best to pick good, useful articles. And here's the thing, I read this stuff anyway. So this is me sharing what I have learned with you. When you can learn from others and not have to figure everything out on your own, it shortens your learning curve, getting you to information faster than doing it on your own. I will also do my best to give you the information I have learned and not make it about my opinion solely. However, I think that every provider always needs to compare new information to information they already know and to other sources of information as well. When I read articles, I ask questions like, does this information pertain to my clinical practice? Does this information support what I already do or know? Could this information change what I do? Is this information I need to be aware of and learn more about in the future because it has the potential to change how I practice? So in the episodes to come, we will dive into articles that I am reading and explore these topics further. I also think it will be a good opportunity to open a dialogue on these topics and to explore them further with engaging comments and getting feedback from you. I want to thank you for watching this video and for subscribing to this channel. One of my goals is to be better today than I was yesterday. Acquiring new knowledge is a great way to do that. Perhaps evidence-based moment will also give you the opportunity to grow and to be better as well. Until then, I will see you next time.